This could be your ship. It could be any ship of the United States Navy. The watch is posted and the ship is secure. But is it? Behind the familiar bulkheads, at duty stations throughout the ship, even in the wardroom pantry in officer country, a silent shipmate lurks, ever willing and able to help you, but also ever ready and able to kill, silently, swiftly, very swiftly. Your deadly shipmate is a friend the majority of the time, easing much of your work, lighting the way, and illuminating the darkness for you. Your deadly shipmate is low voltage electricity. Yes, low voltage, not the high voltage kind whose warning hum and warning sign of danger that no one ignores, not that kind of electricity. 115 volt current is deadly because it is so familiar. You've known it all your life. It drove your electric train when you were a kid. Gave you light to do your homework by. Showed up the fuzz on your face first time you tried to shave. But because 100 volt electric current is so familiar is why it can be so deadly aboard ship. 115 volt current can kill. The Navy knows it. The Navy is always vigilant to eliminate the fatal hazard of electrical shock. Navy tools and wiring are expertly insulated. All tools are grounded. Plug caps are required on all shipboard electrical outlets. Wherever electrical is used aboard ship, rubber matting is laid down to insulate your footing. You are warned away from exposed electrical installations in short, clear Navy language. And Navy posters dramatically picture the cost of carelessness where electric current is concerned. Carelessness. Ah, there's the key word. Carelessness. And carelessness is a guy named Joe. This Joe will show us typical incidents which men are killed by electricity aboard ship. These are not dreamed up. Cases like these actually happened. Joe could be you, sailor. Joe, or Tom, or Willie, his name's not important. The fact that he was careless with 115 volt current is. Joe brushed against the exposed filament of a broken bulb one day, and a telegram was sent. Joe drilled into an electrical conduit on duty one bright at sea. And his next of kin were notified. In the old Navy, decks were scaled by hand. Not long ago, though, a faulty power scaler shorted out. Joe started a job he never finished. The round wire on a movie projector became another fatal trap. An official notification was sent. It happens many ways. An unauthorized fan is smuggled aboard, plugged in without the required ground wire, turned on once. Joe, or Tom, or Willie, was a victim of a shipmate's carelessness, too. His shipmate will never forget that he switched on the vent fan that Joe was repairing. The notification didn't spell out the cause of Joe's death. It wouldn't have helped. Nor could the fact that a sailor was impatient to get at a piece of toast have comforted his next of kin. Yes, it's a deadly shipmate, this 115 volt stuff. The reason is easy to understand. Electricity is power put to work for us under conditions we control. 
but electricity, even low voltage electricity, gets out of control if we mishandle it or if we forget its potential to kill. Electrical current must travel, therefore, through a circuit which we know is secure at every point, whether we can see the entire circuit or not. We must remember that electricity, like any force, will always follow any path it can get through. Also, we must realize that aboard ship, we're surrounded by metal. We walk and sit and work and sleep surrounded by metal. And metal is an efficient conductor of electricity. So if we build ourselves into an optical circuit through careless contact, the current uses our body as a conductor and passes into the overhead, the bulkhead, or the deck. Because we're often wet with salt water or honest sweat, our bodies offer little resistance to the current flow. And when current passes through a vital organ, that's it. There would probably never be an electrical accident if electricity were visible, like for instance, if you reach over your head to prod a weak spot in a cold water line and the line ruptures at that instant, the water flows down your arm and obeying the force of gravity continues until it reaches the deck. All you are is wet. But if you visualize that flow of water as electricity and accept the fact that electricity doesn't merely run down along the outside of your body, it passes through. Why, you can easily understand how fatal electric shock can When the body, your body, is a conductor for low voltage current, fatal shock can result. That's the story. Knowing this could be the difference between life and death for you. Yet, in spite of the easy to understand facts, the Navy has had the tragic duty of announcing the loss of men because of carelessness with, or mishandling of, 115 volt current, the deadly shipmate. Let's review the cases we've seen and see how they, and how they could have been prevented. Joe's job was routine enough. His assignment was to clean the inside of a steam drum. Quarters were tight and bright illumination was needed. Joe decided he needed a larger bulb. But the bulb was too large for the guard. He made the fateful decision to leave the guard off. It was hot in there. The sweat rolled off his body and his hands grew slippery. Yes, he dropped the light. The charged filaments were exposed. You know the rest. A simple act, like bringing in another extension light to double the brightness, and this fatal accident would never have occurred. Joe was installing a sound-powered phone. Simple inspection of any area into which he planned to drill would have prevented this second tragedy. It's standard Navy procedure because it can never be assumed that the other side of a bulkhead is clear. Check it, sailor, to answer Liberty Call next time.